In this video, we're going to complete the project, which have been defined before. Let me, switch to project view. The project view shows all elements of a project in structured form, in various processing windows which may be changed their contents. Now, because we have selected a CPU, you see corresponding tools for configuring PLC station. Now let's get more familiar with project view. Underneath the title bar is the main menu with all menu commands. The menu commands available for selection, depend on the currently marked object, menu commands which cannot be selected are displayed in gray. The same functionality is available with the shortcut menu. These are always present in project view. In the center of the project view, is the working window. The contents of the working window depend on the editor currently being used. Now you see our selected CPU in the center. From the right list, we can choose modules which may be used beside CPU. As you see, when a module is chosen, permissible places are shown with blue rectangle. Like me, try to insert other modules and know what they do. Let me to delete inserted modules and have just a CPU. Well, when you select an object, in the below window, in properties tab, we can change its settings. For example, the next step is we have to link this PLC to my computer, in that case, we have to check the IP addresses. Click on the LAN connector of CPU. You will see a IP address here. This is 192.168.0.1. So, this is the IP address already in my PLC. You can change for example 192.168.0.4. But you have to make sure the PLCs or other devices should have a different address in a network. I hope you know this one. This is a basic concepts of networking. Here we'll have just a PLC, a laptop, and a HMI. Let me to change my PLC address to its default. Now click on CPU, select General tab of below window. Here, we can change PLC name. The PLC name will be changed here and here too. Now let's start programming just with the CPU. So, under PLC name, choose Programs Block Folder and double click on OB1 block. As you see, the working window is changed appropriated programming tasks. This the program which we're going to write. So as you see write this program with these instructions. Now, which address we must write here? Let me show PLC wiring. The stop switch is connected to PLC input with this address I0.2. So I write I0.2 here. Then right click and select rename tag. Here write a suitable tag for this address. As you see, the start switch is connected to I0.0 address. So I can write I0.0 like previous. Another way is, 
I select this address on the CPU. Then drag and drop it here. Let me change its tag to start. And finally, the K contactor is connected to PLC output with Q0.0 address. So I write this address and change its tag to K. Also we can write our comments here. And the address of this contact must be same as output contact. So I drag and drop this address. Or I can write its tag instead of address. Let me save this project. Now, see the right of working windows, this is the task window. Now it's show a list of all programming instruction. If you remember, here was a list of modules, while device configuration. The inspector window underneath the working window has three tabs. Firstly shows the properties of the object marked. Now show OB1 block properties, next is info tab which records the sequence of actions and the last one, provides an overview of the diagnostic statues of the connected device. Here is project tree window. The project tree windows is displayed with the same content for all editors. Its hierarchical structure contains all project data and the required editors. If we double click on any object, its associated editor will be opened in the working window. This are PLC which has been inserted before, we have worked with device configuration and program blocks. Let me add a HMI device. As you see, if a device inserted, appropriated tools will shown here, under that device. At the bottom, here you can switch between portal view and project view. In the middle you can see the tabs of the opened windows. The far right indicates the current status of project processing. After wiring PLC and configuring and programming in TIA software, now the next step is to compile the logic for any error. Click on this icon. TIA starts to compile project. Well, there isn't any error or warning. Now, with this icon we can transfer this program to PLC, but which PLC? Real or virtual PLC? If you have a PLC, connect it to your computer with a LAN cable, Otherwise if you've installed PLC SIM, you can simulate this project. Program downloading in both of them are the same. Let's see how we can have a virtual PLC. Click on online menu, select simulation, and click on start. This message warns you, starting simulation will disable all other online interfaces. Click on OK. Now you can see your virtual PLC on the left side, which is connected to TIA software. In this window click on search. 
Tia software try to find PLCs which are connected to your computer. For mine, it find my virtual PLC. Click on load. Here are some message. Now click on load again. As you see, downloading is done successfully. Pay attention, there isn't any hardware switches on this Somatic S7 1200 CPU, to start it manually, unlike S7 300 or S7 400 CPU models. It's mean, we need TIA software to start S7 1200 CPUs of Siemens company. So you can select start module here. I want to see my program in the PLC, not in TIA software. So click on this glasses icon. When I press this icon, TIA software show me the PLC program which connected to TIA. As you see, the working windows is changed a little. For example the color of this window is changed to orange color. The instructions in the left side has gone, and now a CPU is here, or on the left, we see some green circles. To test the program, we want to change this normally open contact to close. If you use a real PLC, you can change it with this switch. But what about my virtual PLC? Or suppose your switch is broken and can't change the PLC input and there isn't any time to do that. So how can we change PLC input addresses, in these cases? Well, we can do it with TIA software with watch and force table, click on force table. First select any input address which you want to change it. I select my start tag with I0.0 .0 address and also stop tag with I0.2 address. And here write a valid value. For a binary address like I0.0, we just have two valid value. 0 or 1, in other word false or true. I write 1 here. Then, click on this icon, to use inserted value in program, instead of real value. As you see the main LED color is changed to orange. Because this way usually is used in maintenance processes. As you see, a letter F is shown here. Because this contact with the address of PLC input, get its value from force table instead of its input. Also its color is changed to green from blue, and now, pass virtual power to output. Let me change it again. Well, let me to have a better view. Now I'm going to give zero value to start contact. As you see its color return to blue and don't pass the virtual power. But our output is still on, because of this branch. Now I want to change stop contact, it is expected, CPU turn the output off. Well, let me exit from simulation and change the program. We use two digital inputs and one output address in this program. Now let me define an address of CPU memory. Well, I download this program to my virtual PLC again. Now change start contact from force table. As you see, if we want to turn on the output, we need change this normally open contact with an address from memory to close. But we can't do it from force table. For contacts which have an address of CPU memory, right click on that contact, and here modify its value to 1 or 0.
In this lesson we've had an overview of TIA portal software, what the portal and project view are. And also have done a simple project. In next video we're going to learn some points of ladder programming language, and after that, we'll start programming instructions.